In this class, we're going to learn about monomials and polynomials. And there is a broader definition of what a monomial is. But in this particular class, what we're going to see is that a monomial is a product, meaning multiplication, of real numbers and variables. So just a string of multiplication, only multiplication, where we have real numbers and variables. The key here to remember is that these variables, they can have exponents on it. So we could have an x squared or um, a y to the seventh or a z to the, oh, I don't know, hundredth power. We can have exponents on the real numbers and the variables. But in order to be a monomial, all the exponents that are on the variables, they have to be non-negative integers. So non-negative, I'm going to try to squeeze this in here, non-negative integers. So we can't have exponents on the variables that are negative numbers, and we can't have the exponents that are on the integers be fractions or any other numbers. They have to be non-negative integers. I should probably put an S there. Integers. So down below here, let's determine if the following are monomials. And we'll write yes or no, and then we'll say why or why not. So this first one we have 7x squared y to the third z to the negative 1. Well, we have all multiplication, which is good. That's what we want. All between the 7 and the x and the y's, we have multiplication. And it's between real number here, 7. And what about the exponents? That is what we have to be careful about. And we see right here that this is not going to be a monomial because we cannot have we cannot have negative exponents on those variables that's what we cannot have for this next one we have a real number times a variable with a non-negative integer exponent times another variable with a non-negative integer exponent so this is good this is yes this is good this is a, the definition that we are going to use. This would be a monomial. And finally, this last one, x squared plus y squared, we see that we have variables that have exponents which are non-negative integers, so that's good. So your instinct may be, yes, that this is a monomial. The problem is that these two, x squared and y squared, are not separated by multiplication. They're separated by addition. So by our definition, this would be no, because we can only have multiplication between them. We cannot have x squared plus y squared. That makes it, actually, this would be a binomial. We have two different terms. Terms are separated by addition and subtraction. So monomial, meaning one, this is not one term. It's separated by addition. Now let's use this definition of a monomial to define what a polynomial is. Using the definition of a monomial, we're going to define in this class what a polynomial is. And a pol polynomial is just the finite sum of monomials. Finite meaning it's not going to be going on and on and on forever. It's just going to, it's going to have an end. It's going to have a certain number of terms. So the finite sum of monomials. So in order to determine whether or not we have a pol polynomial, we just need to look at the different terms, and the terms are separated by addition and subtraction. So these, if you look at this first example, this would be three different terms. This one also has three terms. We just need to make sure that each term is a monomial. And in that last slide, we saw that a monomial is a product of real numbers and variables, and we just need to make sure that the variables have non-negative exponents. And if that's the case, then we can say that it is a polynomial. So for this first example, we see that we have three terms, and we need to look at each one of these terms and determine if it's a monomial. And if it is a monomial, then these three terms, when you add them together, form a polynomial. So if you look here, 1 fifth x squared, that is a monomial. The exponent on the variable is positive, and it's not a fraction, so we're good. The second term looks a little strange because we have 3 to the negative first power. So you may say, well, that's not a monomial because we can't have a negative 1 exponent. 
But remember, we can't have a negative one exponent on a variable. We can have a negative one exponent on a number, a real number. This is just one over three. That's what that means. So that's okay. That doesn't stop us. We're allowed to have negative numbers as exponents on our real numbers. That's fine. And then finally, 5y to the 7th, that's fine too. So yes, this would be a polynomial. This is a polynomial. Our second example, 5y squared, that's a monomial. Minus, we can have subtraction between terms. You may say, well, what about addition? We said it's the sum. Well, we can write this as just plus negative 3. So we could write this as a sum if we wanted to. x to the negative first. That is not good. We cannot have, that's not good. We cannot have a negative exponent on our, our uh, variable there. And even in our last term here, we can't have that as well. So this would be no. This is not a polynomial because each one of the terms is not a monomial itself. Finally, the last thing we need to discuss is degree and the leading coefficient. An important characteristic of monomials and polynomials is the degree. And first we're going to talk about, in order to talk about the degree of a polynomial, we first need to find the degree of the monomial. Because remember, a polynomial is made up of monomials. Depending on how many of the monomials are being added, we could have five terms or six terms or seven terms. So we need to determine the degree of each one of those terms first, and then we can determine the the degree of the polynomial. So to find the degree of each monomial in the polynomial, we just need to find the sum of the exponent on the variables. So look at the different terms and look at each monomial separately and then add up the exponents on or add up, excuse me, add up the exponents on the variables. That's correct. So look at the monomial, look at the exponents that are on the variables and add them together. And then once you do that, you have a degree for each one of the monomials in the polynomial. And then you determine which one of those represents the polynomial. You just choose, choose the largest one. So the degree of the polynomial is the degree of the monomial with the largest degree. And that may sound confusing, and I tried to think of the best way to word that. But you'll see probably in these examples it'll make a little bit more sense. So in this first degree, this polynomial here. We need to find the degree of this polynomial and we see there are three terms, three different monomials that make up this polynomial. This is a three-term polynomial. We could also call this a trinomial. Tri meaning three. So three terms, we need to find the degree of each one of these and then whichever one is the largest, that's going to be the degree of the polynomial. So let's take each term individually and find the degree. So our first term is 5x to the first, y to the fourth. So the degree of this polynomial is, well, the exponent on the one, or the exponent on the x is one, and the exponent on the y is four. So take all the exponents on the variables and add them together. So the degree here is five. The degree of that monomial is five. The second term, 7x to the third y, we look at the, or how many, we're really just looking to see how many different variables are being multiplied times each other. So we have three x's and we have one y, so this degree is four. And then finally the last monomial, 8x squared y to the seventh, we need to see how many variables are being multiplied times each other. There's two x's being multiplied here, there are seven y's, so two plus seven. The degree of this monomial is nine. So finally, the degree of the polynomial is the largest of those numbers. And the monomial with the largest degree is this last one. We get a degree of nine, so the degree of this polynomial is nine.